Hey, I recently installed a 2 inch HRG lift kit on my turbo Honda CRV. It's awesome and I love it and I am like a big tank and I can drive over whatever I want. Uh, to be clear, I did not install the basic kit that just has spacers and bolts. I went ahead and installed the ultimate lift kit that has also rear trailing arm spacers, adjustable ball joints, and adjustable camber arms in addition to the spacers. The problem I had was I had to cut right here, notch my rear trailing arm in order to clear my coils. Uh, without doing that, the coil was completely locked against the rear trailing arm. And I couldn't had no travel whatsoever. I couldn't move it up or down. Now there is some debate on the internet of all places that some say you do not have to do this to install this kit. Others say that the only way they could get it to work at all was by notching it, just like I did. I fall into that second category. Now the problem is, by cutting the rear trailing arm, we've compromised it. That curved part makes it stronger in the same way that angle iron is a lot stronger and harder to bend than a piece of flat steel. Here is somebody else's CRV where they notched it the same way that I did, and you can see that lateral forces on the wheel have caused the rear trailing arm to split at exactly where it was notched. So today, I'm going to reinforce my rear trailing arms to prevent this from happening to me. The first way I'll reinforce this is by welding in this flat bar. It's 4.9 millimeters according to my calipers, which is nearly double the thickness of the trailing arm. I'm going to weld it in vertically on this right side where I had cut out the notch. So I'm going to measure six and a half inches for each side, left and right of the car, and cut these bars. I cut some of the bar with the angle grinder and a cutoff wheel, and then I cut some more with the Milwaukee M12 hacksaw. I thought that was actually better, it's faster, cuts a straighter line. Probably a bandsaw would be even better, but this is what I did. In order to weld this, I need it free of whatever this coating is, so I'm going to take it off with a die grinder and probably hit it on the belt sander and then use the die grinder also on the trailing arm itself to remove the paint. Now I'm not an expert welder, but I am a good enough welder and apparently a better welder than positioning the camera on a tripod so that you can see the welding. I positioned it right here so that it would cover the entire area that possibly could or would tear the part that's been compromised by my notching. Now this is probably overkill. I also cut some square tube. It's much thinner, but it's square, so it's going to be much stronger to bending forces, like sideways forces, while the thick flat piece will be very strong against pulling forces. Uh, this I'm going to weld in the back, behind here. And again, before I weld anything, I need to remove the paint. I can't possibly fit the die grinder in here, so a Dremel it is. Now I think this should go without saying that if you're the kind of person that installs a lift kit on a 20 year old Honda or cuts a rear trailing arm, you understand that you're taking matters into your own hands and there's your own risk, uh, but I'm just going to remind you. Be safe. It's not my fault. If you're wondering why I'm wearing M81 BDU Army uniforms, it's because they're the ultimate shop shirt. They are cheap, $20 on eBay. They have a lot of pockets. They're very durable, and they keep me warm in the shop. So here is the finished product. I painted it so it doesn't rust and, well, doesn't really even stand out. You'd hardly notice that if you didn't know it was there. And on the back, I painted it as well, where you would certainly notice it if you were looking at the back, but that's why it's on the back. I still got to do the other side, but I'd call that the finished product. 